So uh, for the past three weeks, I have been slowly building a picture of American cultural life. So we may understand the root cause behind the disconnection rampant in our society. Using the words of James Baldwin, I have created this picture based on the idea that the heart of disconnection, pain, oppression, and trauma in America comes from our lack of a healthy and nourishing private life. Because we are disconnected from what it truly means to be a human in the fullest capacity, we have lost sight of how to treat one another with the dignity and love that we are all worthy of. I began our journey two weeks ago with perfection, who I see as the general in command of American disconnection. Perfection encourages control rather than freedom of self. It seeks to keep each of us in a carefully curated box. From there, we went to stagnancy, the enforcer of our general. Change, growth, mistakes, and challenge are discouraged. Stay where you are and don't move. Through this, we become complacent inactive, conformed. Today, I want to bring us into the world of American performance. Performance is an interesting one because it is a necessary tool of both stagnancy and perfection. It is the mysterious weapon of American disconnection that is hard to put our fingers on. It is perhaps the single most powerful tool in an unjust and oppressive society because it acts as an, an, an impenetrable wall between all people. It is everywhere and nowhere all at once, spreading one of the saddest realities I have witnessed in my lifetime, human relational disconnection, or to put it in more blatant terms, the loss of human love. What do I mean by all of this? What does performing mean? Simply put, performance is when a human being acts from a place that does not uniquely belong to them. It is when a woman allows her boundaries to be crossed or when a man tries to act hyper-masculine in order to fit in. It is when a doctor sticks to their daily set script or when we over identify with the work we do and choose to be an accountant through life instead of a human. Performance is when we act like how we feel we should act. When we speak from a place that is not distinctly true to who we are. We can perform with ourselves, with our loved ones, with our friends, and with our acquaintances. Performance can be a word or phrase spoken in a split moment. It can be the way we walk and the tone we talk. It can be how we present ourselves, how we listen and communicate. However tiny or big it appears in our lives, it is a barrier between our hearts and others. All of us have a set of identities that act as scripts, and our choice to engage with those scripts, to use them in our daily lives, in our interactions and relationships, is the show we put on for the world, our performance. To be honest, I have been trying to come up with a more of an explanation of this concept of performance for days, but it has eluded me. And every time I try to write about what performance is, I end up three pages deep in very heady explanations. We're not going to do that today. Performance is way too sneaky. And it's instead, I invite you into this exploration with me. I personally feel like an archeologist digging deep into the earth, into myself, trying to find the hidden answer. 
and I trust your personal power in finding where performance lives within you. Let us be archaeologists together. So where does one begin in the search for performance in their lives? A good place I have found to start is identifying the distinct feeling of being around people who we connect with deeply versus people who we don't get along with very well but need to. There's a difference, right? When we are with someone who truly sees and loves us for who we are, we feel energetic, confident, seen, relaxed, joyful. When we are around someone who does not know us well or misunderstands us in some way, we feel tired, bored, disengaged, uninterested, sad, angry. In one case, we are acting from our authentic selves, engaging in vulnerability and trusting relationship. The other case, however, we are most likely holding most of ourselves back, speaking half-truths, acting nice instead of kind. This is the difference between performance and authentic relating. Performance is saying and doing things that are not truly what we believe or what we want to do in order to socially get by. Because of this, it gives off a distinct feeling of unease. We may be used to that feeling from living a reality de dominated by performance. But through experiencing the contrast, we are able to start to recognize when we are performing. So why was our question for today's storytelling, how are you really? This question, believe it or not, is at the core of our next stop on the disconnection train. I believe that how are you is the most obvious and least heady way we can grasp the reality of performance in American lives. How are you? I invite you to count how many times you say this to someone else, stranger or friend alike, over the course of one day. How are you? I'm good. Most of the time it is good, or okay, or if you're really having a bad day, fine, or tired. What is wrong with this classic American greeting? Well, it removes the significance behind the question, how are you? How are you is holy. It is asking a person directly about them without any ifs, ands, or buts. It is bringing attention and care to them and their feelings at that moment. When you ask someone how they are and you mean it, something happens. The other person is given a moment of relief. Their burden of life, their experiences, no longer have to be contained within themselves. Asking someone how they are and meaning it gives another person the opportunity to share themselves and their hardships and joys. The core of connection comes from the honoring of the interdependence of all living things. Asking another person how they are and meaning it invites us deeper into the interconnected web of all life. It taps us into the shared reality of being human, reminding us that the people in our lives are filled with fear, joy, sadness, excitement, just as us. But when we ask each other, how are you, over 
and over again to strangers and friends and family and everything in between, we are taking away from the significance of the question. We are disabling its power. When we answer good or okay, we are offending its sacredness. To simply answer good because the person asking me the question doesn't really want to know how I am stuffs the truth of my lived reality down further within me. Instead of sharing myself, allowing my truth of living to blossom and safely be held in the world, it is further internalized, grimly boxed up and thrown away in the attic of my mind. I can feel myself seizing up in discomfort every time I answer good to an uninterested, how are you greeting? On the other side of things, I have always believed it is important to never ask a question you don't mean. Never offer something you can't give. If I do not want to know how someone is doing, which is completely okay, then I should not ask them how they are. Asking how are you and not meaning it spins us deeper into the realm of niceties and white lies of polite society, where we are not being truthful and honest with each other on a very basic level of social interaction. This creates distrust and unease around strangers and friends alike. This makes it so that we are more concerned with appearing a certain way than being who we are. This is the problem with performance and the how are you's of the American cultural sphere. It removes the possibility of safety. There is no space, no open space, for anyone to share anything other than good. There is no permission to be vulnerable in our society. There is no permission to answer how are you honestly, even oftentimes with our loved ones and friends. There is no space in our day-to-day -day interactions where we are allowed to be honest with others about who we are, what is happening in our lives, and how we are feeling about it. This breeds a dangerous cycle. The more we perform in our relationships, the further the space between us becomes, and the harder it is to relate deeply and lovingly. The more this happens, the least likely we are to jump into vulnerability. All of a sudden, we are living worlds apart from our neighbors, communi community members, even friends and family. All of a sudden, the love that makes this human existence so radical is lost. A performed life is a life where we go through our days without having any real conversations or connections with other humans. It is a life built on the foundation of perfection and kept still by the forces of stagnancy. Who has seen you in spaces of vulnerability? where you have shown other sides of yourself and they have accepted them, loved them, seen them. How many of us go about our lives every day having conversations with people and then come home and realize that we never actually spoke to anyone in a true, real way? I believe I started to perform in elementary school, but I truly began to notice it within myself in college. I would walk around my everyday life all cheery and sweet, and then in moments by myself, this raging despair would set in. It was confusing. How come I am so good at being good when my insides are falling apart? 
It's because I have always known how to put on a show for the world. I know how to make myself likable and enjoyable and someone who is fun to be around and interesting to talk to. I know how to be a sweet woman, a dutiful daughter, and a good student. And there's nothing wrong with all of these things for the most part. The problem comes in when we are living more into our performed identities, into the show we put on for the world, rather than the real lived experience of who we are and how we are feeling. This ability of mine to perform being okay has become one of the most difficult roadblocks in my life because it actively prevents me from forming close, intimate friendships and relationships. I want to be vulnerable with you today because I believe in the power of vulnerability, perhaps more than anything when it comes to human life. And big surprise, I believe that vulnerability is the opponent to performance. I want to be vulnerable and say that I truly struggled to write this sermon. I struggled because for the past few months I have been stuck in an incredibly long and painful bout of loneliness. This experience of loneliness has been starkly present in my life since I was a child. And I believe that I struggle with loneliness so deeply because I still have so many walls up around me. I still want to perform for everyone and make it seem like I'm completely okay and happy and in control of my life and not afraid at all. Because of this, I push people away because I don't want to tell people how I really am, because I have convinced myself that no one really cares. I have effectively isolated myself, putting myself further and further away from the intimacy and vulnerability of healthy relationships. I'm not saying this out loud for pity or help or fixing of any kind. I am saying it because these walls around me and the image of self that I am constantly trying to present to the world is weakened when I share myself truly with others. The true me, the authentic me, is empowered when I engage in acts of vulnerability. And the more authentic and vulnerable I am, the deeper my relationships become the more love I feel flowing in and around me. This is what I have learned about performance and vulnerability. The more we perform, the more judgmental we become. When we perform, we psychoanalyze and obsessively examine other people's faults in their own performance while also subconsciously hating our own. When we perform, we are living in a state of pretending, of avoiding and keeping everyone away from us. It is a miserable existence and it is why so many of us in this country spend our lives in states of bitter loneliness. But vulnerability, living from our core self, allows for something beautiful to happen a moment of genuine care, a sensation of deep compassion, a knowing of truth so deep in the core of our being that we are truly obliterated by its beauty. Coming from our vulnerable selves means to be connected to a very deep rooted place within. The feeling is one of well-being because we are at home in ourselves and sharing this home with others. Ultimately, I believe the path to knowing and acting from this vulnerability is to trust your body. 
It knows more than you could ever imagine. When I am acting like a chaplain, instead of being a chaplain, I start to feel fatigued and tired. My energy is drained. I become impatient and ungrounded. I begin to live more in my head. When I am acting like a woman, instead of being the woman I am, I feel discomfort around my appearance and my love for myself diminishes, turning into a low and steady criticism of body and self. And of course, when I engage in conversations in which I am avoiding vulnerability simply in order to not be a burden on another person, my body seizes up. I get sad and anxious. My heart begins to hurt in this physically palpable way. Perhaps then the first step in all of this is beginning to share who we are with others and encourage others to honestly answer a how are you question, or perhaps not asking it at, it at all unless we are truly in a place of, to listen. I didn't realize how powerful this simple act was until after I started leading my deep listening workshops about a year ago. One of the exercises in these workshops is to take 10 minutes at the end of our time together and break off into pairs to practice deep listening. I encourage participants to open up about what is happening in their lives, what is on their minds, and to share with one another so their partner can practice listening. I remember the first session I did this. I remember it clearly because the look on people's faces after 10 minutes were up is the same look I see after every session I lead, no matter the group since that day. It is a look of relaxation, joy, relief. In their eyes, I see clarity. The simple power of giving another loving permission to share authentically is unbelievable. Because then people get to share and listen and give and receive in a way that is safe and loving. This is intrinsic, essential to the human experience. But where are those spaces available in our world? Where do we learn the skills to become good listeners and vulnerable speakers? Who teaches us how to be vulnerable and share what is going on in our lives as an es essential skill for living a healthy and enjoyable life? It doesn't exist, and because of it, we as a collective do not have the language or the experience it takes to enter into difficult conversations of vulnerability. Instead, we are taught to put on a show, the I'm good show. Sweep everything under the rug, lock your feelings in a box, and follow the script. And when situations of realness arise, we don't know what to do, so we turn away. My challenge for you this week is to answer and ask, how are you, from a place of truth and vulnerability deep in your hearts. I challenge you to begin to search for those places within where you may have put up walls in order to protect or prevent or deceive because when I look at the state of the world right now, I see billions of human beings who really, truly need to communicate in a way where they are not putting on a show. I see human beings who desperately need the flow of love to be unrestricted, free, and giving. The further away we are from one another, the harder this change we so desperately need becomes. And I give you my blessing. 
I too am on this journey and it is rocky and hard and disheartening at times. But to know that perhaps all of us are on this journey together, a journey into the core of our love and authenticity, gives me hope that none of us are alone. It gives me hope that one day the performance will be over and we will be able to live in a world where we truly see one another at the most basic level with the fullness of our hearts. Amen. Blessed be.